This is the Delhi station of All India Radio. Please stand by for our next broadcast. On the foundation day of the National Human Rights Commission of India, we bring to you an exclusive interview with Mr. Justice Arun Mishra, Honorable Chairperson, National Human Rights Commission. The interviewer is Manoj Mankar, Senior Broadcaster, All India Radio. It's a privilege and a pleasure to welcome Honorable Chairperson, National Human Rights Commission. Justice Arun Mishra to the airwaves of All India Radio. As the nation celebrates the 29th Foundation Day of NHRC, the first question that comes to mind: How has the area of human rights been dealt with, generally speaking? In the most effective manner, the human rights in the entire country, its reach and ambit, is through the far-flung areas, and everybody can approach us just merely by writing few lines or sending any message online. or otherwise any third person can also approach the commission for redressal of the grievance of others that is the hallmark of this institution that it is easily approachable and delivers the justice in most speedy manner where there is police inaction direction is issued invariably to take action in accordance with law where there is arbitrariness in uh, distribution of the justice welfare schemes are not being properly implemented in that case also large number of cases are there in which commission has intervened and uh, granted relief to the incumbents recently in odisha there were 2500 cases which were decided by a common order mm-hmm. a direction was issued to give the benefit of pmay scheme which has been formed for benefit of the poor person their entitlement was seen at the direction of the commission and uh, those who were entitled were granted relief by the state government and those who were not found entitled cases were also decided by us at one go on the 30th of march we could decide large number of cases recently there was one case in which uh, commission intervened teachers were being removed more than 2 lakh teachers benefited by the intervention of the commission the qualifications were changed with the re- retrospective effect sort of uh, removal was hanging upon their head so commission intervened and then the state also realized that it could not be done retrospectively and then relief was granted to those and in large number of cases we are issuing direction to disburse a pensionary benefit wherever there is some delay or inordinate delay we issue direction for grant of pensionary benefit and other retiral dues which should be disbursed timely to the incumbents and then commission is also has effectively in- interfered in the bonded labor silicosis matters and commission has directed the various state governments also to frame the scheme for compensating silicosis persons who suffer died due to silicosis or are suffering with silicosis i am happy to note that various state governments have framed the schemes providing s- either pensionary benefit or some lump sum compensation etc and other social welfare measures so various states have come where the silicosis is prevailing to help the victims of silicosis and then with respect to death in judicial custody or police custody mm-hmm. recently the commission has asked the state governments to frame a policy to provide the compensation even in the case of suicide mm-hmm. when a person has died in the custody for no fault or due to negligence or some other cause which is not a natural cause to frame a policy to award compensation in so moto without interference of the commissions or the court so some of the states are coming forward with such schemes like haryana etc i feel that other states should also come with the mm-hmm. scheme we are working also on the mental hospitals we commission has inspected four mental hospitals gwalior two at ranchi and one at agra and other 39 mental hospitals are being inspected by our special reporters lot of improvement is required in these hospitals mm. and particularly i am surprised and shocked by the fact that even after the patients have cured they are being kept in such hospitals for 3 4 years or more period even after they have been cured it is not permissible under the mental health care act 2017 they have to be sent back to the community and mere refusal by the family cannot be a ground to give them community healing they should be sent back to the community administration and hospital should combine together to send these cured patients back to their houses 
it is absolutely necessary and has to be done on priority basis. There are several other advisories which we have issued recently. Today we have issued a very important advisory with respect to how to prevent the ocular trauma in the children. Blinding takes place, you see. This is one factor is that slack line which is used in beetle. If it enters the eye, even due to mistake, fault of anybody, then it causes irreparable blinding. Nobody is aware of it. It has to be, people have to be made aware of this. And secondly, the crackers which are being used for the last 12 or 15 years are such which cause blinding, you see. This is a study done by the ophthalmologists of the country. And then they stated there are other chemicals also which cause blindness, but no such caution is printed over their packets. It is required that it should be mentioned on the packets or the bottles in which they are sold that this would cause blinding in case this comes into contact of the eye. And then there are various for rehabilitation of low vision people, there should be a center at each and every district which is necessary. Our advisory contains various other recommendations also and I am happy to inform that uh, we have issued a Another advisory with respect to taking care of the truck driver's welfare. They should be provided 15 lakhs insurance along with cleaner and co-driver. And then they should be provided food, uh, rest places, proper food should also be available. We have issued various directions and in that and for workers involved in the septic tank cleaning and sewer lines. We have issued an advisory to provide them safety gears and to adopt the mechanical method of cleaning by Bandikoot, etc., which has been successfully being done at Hyderabad, which is the best practice in India with respect to the septic tank and sewer cleaning. With respect to bonded labor also, advisory which was issued by us has been accepted by the government of India and they have modified the guidelines. And there are several other fields in which commission has successfully intervened and made the independent investigations. There was a case in which uh, Supreme Court asked the commission investigation team to investigate. Mm. The governments were denying the very existence of the girl. Our investigation team not only found that girl was there and then was alive also and could be traced. So that is the credibility of our investigation team and it has investigated various cases. It goes every month at least to seven to eight places for making his independent spot inquiry where police is not able to crack investigation team goes and then inspect and reports submitted by our investigation team have been accepted by the courts acted upon if you look at the trajectory curve of the commission itself the last 29 years what do you think the high points are commission has been formed in order to take the constitutional values to home distributive justice balancing is to be there in distribution of benefits and distributive justice so emphasis is on the distributive justice it should reach to the needy and the divide between the people should come to an end. That is the effort of the commission to help the weak as against the mighty. To stop the human trafficking is one of the area in which our investigation team is very seriously working at this juncture. Under a judicial order passed by the commission, under an order passed by the commission, we have asked our investigation team to crack it. And we have appointed a special rapporteur also to crack the human trafficking. This is not only in India, but this phenomena is world over. So it has to be cracked. We are also worried about the misuse of the cyber space. Okay. Again, Cyber space idea. is also being misused for this trafficking, sex trafficking as well as human trafficking. Adoptions, Lakshmi Khan Pandey's case was the Supreme Court laid down the guidelines now, law has come, hmm. but still we have to be careful that children are not abused under the guise of adoption. Travel belt, we went to certain states recently. I would not name them, but still we received the complaints that it is there, the trafficking is there of the travel from the travel belt. They are vulnerable. They are being taken for on text of being offered a job, etc. Actually, it's human mm -hmm. trafficking which is taking place. So it has to be stopped. For that, we have to work at the grassroots level. We have to eradicate those causes socio-economic causes as well as poverty, which is responsible for all this. Still, a lot is required to be done. Has there been an attempt to synchronize national human rights institutions across the globe? Actually, international collaboration is the requirement of the day. Without international collaboration, environment cannot be improved. We have to work together. India has emerged as a world leader in this field of environmental protection. And then secondly, for elimination of discrimination against the woman, is another 
field in which the entire world should cooperate. Half of the population of the world cannot be deprived of gender justice. Time has come to think over how to give justice to the woman and to make them equal partners in all walks of life. Why they should not inherit equal property? True. Why they should not have equal rights? Mother gives birth. But that mother herself is deprived of the basic fundamental rights. Equality with the person to whom she gives the birth is not permitted by God of any religion. If any religious practice is there or any custom is there, it should give way to the basic fundamental human right of equality and gender justice. Mm -hmm. So, with this point of view, I feel that time has come mm -hmm. when Article 44 should not remain a, of our Constitution of India, which was enacted mm -hmm. 75 years back, should not remain a dead letter. It is required to be implemented in right earnest. This year's Nobel Peace Prize pertains to the subject of human rights. In the rapidly evolving global order, amid the shifting sands of definitions, where do we place ourselves, India as a nation, in according due priority to human rights, if we look at it comparatively, sir? If we see the structure of Human Rights Act and the uh, commissions in the country, I would rank India as the first in the world. Okay. We have 25 commissions in the various states which are functioning. They are statutory commissions. Mm -hmm. Besides, there is national commission for union list and also for concurrent and state list. Mm. It can exercise jurisdiction. It exercise jurisdiction, concurrent jurisdiction, the state commissions also. Mm. So much infrastructure is there, so much manpower is there. It is nowhere in the world that such manpower is involved in the work and of human rights and for protection and promotion and preservation of the same. And the complaints which we received mm. every day, roughly 400. Last year we received one lakh uh, twenty one thousand complaints. Of Last various one types. Day. Various types. And then we have decided one lakh twenty eight thousand cases. Mm -hmm. This is a decision by National Human Rights Commission only. Then the state commissions also receives the complaints, lot of complaints, and then they decide, you see. It's a very big country. And the compensation which we have recommended in last one year is approximately 10 crores rupees in 250 cases. Recommendations have been made. Whenever we find that there is any violation of human rights, then we direct the state government to make the payment of the compensation. Justice Mishra, purely from a humanitarian point of view, a common man often wonders about the inherent dichotomy in the issue of human rights. A case in point is personnel dedicated to the protection of citizens and the risks they are bound to face in the line of duty often culminating in the supreme sacrifice. Does the same citizenry need to be educated more about the human face of our security personnel as fellow human beings? I see this uh, question with in two perspectives. Firstly, there is no doubt that the supreme sacrifice is made by the various paramilitary forces, police, hmm. even by the army personnel. Terrorism can never succeed. It is unproductive. So. Our paramilitary forces, police personnel and even army persons are being killed in encounters and a lot of precious life have been lost. And this is sacrifice can, is unparalleled. It has to be respected because it is just to protect the citizenry of this country that they have made the supreme sacrifice of their life. They carry the dagger for protection of the citizens of this country. Mm not for killing. At the same time, when citizenry has to respect them, it is also bounden duty, which is the other side of the coin, that it is the bounden duty of such forces mm -hmm. to respect the human rights mm -hmm. of all and to use only that much force which is necessary mm -hmm. in an encounter, not more than that. Mm -hmm. And then extrajudicial killings mm -hmm. are not at all permissible within the mm -hmm. constitutional framework. Law must take its own course. Mm -hmm. Whenever there is any aberration in this, we take cognizance of that. Sir, in a lighter vein, can the gamut of human rights be extrapolated institutionally to include a few more trivial theatres in day-to-day -day lives? Sound pollution, driving patterns, road rage, bullying at places of work, educational institutions, and things like that. This question is in the backdrop of our paths towards becoming an advanced country in the near future, sir. Pollution is the subject uh. on which Commission has issued recently an advisory also. So that pollution, environmental issues includes the sound pollution also. And there are several cases in which we have taken the cognizance. In Delhi also, 
with respect to landfill sites, Gazipur, etc. There are cases pending in the commission and we have called for the reports, requisite reports from the authorities. Similarly, with respect to several other places regarding pollution and non-fulfillment of the estuary duty by the civil authorities, mm -hmm. those directory principles have found a statutory expression that city has to be kept clean. Mm. So, municipal bodies, civil authorities have to work towards this. They cannot be permitted to say that they are not having enough funds they must divert their fund for the duty which are necessary to perform mm -hmm. under the institute. With respect to bullying at places of work, there are a lot of cases which are coming to the commission already and since long they are coming and we are looking into that, we are directing appropriate action in case it has not been taken and direct payment of compensation in educational institution whenever there is ragging commission has worked so much on this ragging part okay. that we invariably call for the reports uh -huh. with respect to ragging in a uh, school higher in education institution. Yesterday only a case in which a uh, child was beaten, hmm. five years child was beaten by the teacher. We have called for the action taken okay. report. One cannot punish the children like this you see in the school and in midday meals etc. also whenever we find that substandard quality food has been served, even utensils were not clean. Hmm. We have directed to authorities to do the necessary justice not to involve in such practice and to serve good food as we come to the conclusion of uh, our little discussion could you recommend something from nhrc publications journals and books that are published here that could serve as a you know a ready reckoner or something for the common man we publish uh, small booklets hmm. in vernacular language for creating awareness in the masses that is one thing they are easily available and secondly we publish a very research journal every year containing very selected articles which are selected by the best academia okay. of the country directors of national law school and uh, Tata institutes etc and various other universities they are the editors of it okay. and very renowned person write those research articles and then they found place in our reputed annual journal which we published from NHRC. If you look at uh, the countryside from the headquarters here, something like outreach camps where actually a team goes from Delhi and actually, despite the presence of state commissioners. Yes, yes. Recently, we have gone to Guwahati, Shillong, okay. and then thereafter to Ranchi. We hmm. conducted open court settings over. Oh. People came. Hmm. We entertained the complaints also directly there. Mm -hmm. And we decided the courts in open hearing in the presence of the officers were also present, complainants were also present. Yeah. So it was a so much satisfying exercise that most of the people went happily and the state officers also when they were there cooperated with us at all the places and then we could dispense the justice to the needy, those who required redressal of their grievance. They were very happy. And then thereafter, we have conducted interaction with the NGOs and civil society as well as human rights defenders. They were open meeting at all three places. Okay. They were also very happy. They were hard. We were satisfied with their work. Wonderful work is being done by certain NGOs in these places. So it is not that the NGOs and civil society is not contributing for defending the human rights. They are also working at the ground root level. Anyone who's tuned in to this interview at the conclusion would naturally be curious to know if uh, there's a helpline number, so to say, or can he visit the website directly and if he wants to approach, yes. is it easy? Helpline number is there which is open okay. and then we have a focal point also hmm. for HRDs. They can approach 24 hours into 7. Okay. That is available. So they can give a call and a requisite direction will be issued by the focal point officer. Our website is op mm. also open mm. to be accessed by everybody. Honorable Chairperson, National Human Rights Commission, Justice Arun Mishra, thank you very much for sparing time for the listeners of All India Radio. Thank you very much. Thank you. On the foundation day of the National Human Rights Commission of India, you were listening to an exclusive interview with Mr. Justice Arun Mishra, Honorable Chairperson, National Human Rights Commission of India. The interviewer was Manoj Mankar, Senior Broadcaster, All India Radio. This broadcast came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.